Church and welcome to 2023. Woo! This is a reason for celebration. We know that the Lord has planned, He has purposed, and He has ordained this year to come. And we are excited to live in His plans and His purposes for our lives. And what better way to celebrate the start of 2023 than by lifting His name high, by just worshiping and praising our Heavenly Father. And that's what tonight is all about, church. We're just going to lift our voices, our hearts, our hands. We're going to praise. We're going to worship. We're going to pray tonight. And as this is a worship night, feel free. If you want to stand throughout the night, you're more than welcome to do that. If you'd like to spend some time sitting in contemplation, you're more than welcome to do that as well. If you'd even like to get up and maybe walk a little bit as you're praising and as you're worshiping. And these altar areas are open all night as well. If you'd even like to, as we're praying and worshiping, just come forward and just pray on your knees here at the altar, you are more than welcome to do that because this is a night where we're just going to put our Heavenly Father first and foremost. We're going to praise His name above all other names. We're going to honor Him for who He is, and we're going to celebrate and welcome 2023 as the year of the Lord. Amen, church. Let's lift our hearts. Let's lift our voices. Would you stand with us as we begin to praise? Through you, I can do anything, I can do all things, cause it you gives me strength, nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. Not gonna live by what I see. Not gonna live by what I feel. Deep down, I know that you're here with me. I know that you can do anything. Through you, I can do anything. Nothing is impossible Through you, blind eyes are open Strong roads are broken I am living by faith Nothing is impossible I believe, I believe 
Church Alaska, I'm going to here to encourage us it's around our tithing, and so I just want to start off with what we believe as a church, which is just tithing is kind of a sacrifice, um, and just kind of aligning ourselves with God's purpose, and just kind of what God really wants to do is bless us, and He does that through tithing. And I can be, if I'm be honest, I think tithing is one of my favorite things sometimes because I'll, I'll give God what He's asked me to give, and then I get a raise at work or, or a check in the mail or kind of however it looks. But if I can be really honest, sometimes tithing's probably not my favorite thing, and it's one of my, <laughs> my least favorite things to do, because when, uh, when the rent's due tomorrow, and I got a flat tire yesterday, and then God's asking me to give however much he's asking me to give, it's one of my least favorite things to do. And, but can I encourage you guys, just whatever it is that you might be going through, whether it's good or bad, to just keep going. Uh, because I know in my life, that I like, there's been tremendous blessings in my parents' life, and honestly, if you look really anywhere in the Bible, there's tremendous blessings from whenever we give, uh, give our blessings to God. And in fact, it is the one thing that God says to test him in. In, uh, in Malachi 3.10, it says, test me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out you a blessing until it overflows. And I just, it's just really interesting to me that this is the one thing that God really says test him in. And I was talking with my dad recently, and he, he said it's one of the easiest ways to, for God to show us that he really is there and he really is with us um, in just testing us in that. And so on the screen, there might be some things. Um, never mind. Uh, but if you want to be able to give to our church, you can go online at uh, Summit Church Alaska. There it is right there. Um, summitchurchak.org slash give. Um, there's buckets right up here. Or you can text any dollar amount to 84321. Uh, let me pray before I go back into worship. Well, God, right now, I just want to thank you for everything that you've done in the people's lives right here. I want to thank you for getting us through another year and blessing us in everything that you have done. God, I want to pray a blessing over this next year that you will, you will get us to the next one, God. And right now, I just want to thank you and just help us be in awe of who you are. And in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. As we worship tonight, we are going to embark together as the church family of Summit on what we call here at Summit purposeful prayer. It is prayer that we find in God's word. It is scriptural prayer. It is to pray with purpose and intention through the word of God. So as we go through tonight, we're going to practice together as a church family, as believers, as the sons and daughters of Jesus Christ, what it looks like to walk out purposeful prayer. And as we do so, we're going to pray, we're going to worship, we're going to pray, we're going to worship. But when we begin in purposeful prayer, we begin with adoration. Adoration. We begin our prayer. We adore who our God is. As we come before our Heavenly Father in prayer, this is a time when we can say, God, it's not because of what you've done, but God, it's because of who you are. You are the beginning and the end. You are the creator. You are love and gentleness and peace and goodness. And Lord, we give you glory because of who you are. We see that in Revelation 22. This is our scripture for adoration. 
I am. This is our Heavenly Father speaking. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the, begin, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. That is who our Jesus is. And as we come before him in prayer, whenever we come before him in prayer, we begin with the adoration of who he is, the Alpha and Omega, the first, the last, the beginning, and the end. So today as a church, we're going to do that today. Let's, we're going to go into prayer. I'm going to turn my microphone off and all of us together across this entire auditorium for just a few moments, we are going to raise our voices right where we're standing right where we're going to sit and just between us and our Jesus, we are going to speak to our Heavenly Father adoration of who He is before we go into the next song. Would you do that now? Would you just bow your heads, lift your voices, and speak between yourself and your Heavenly Father? We're going to hear a beautiful hum of voices, and God's going to know every single word. And we're going to speak out loud the adoration to our Father of who He is. Oh, Heavenly Father. We magnify your name, Lord. You alone deserve the glory, Lord. You alone deserve the honor and the praise.
the honor and the praise lord jesus this song is forever yours a thousand hallelujahs and a thousand more amen lord you deserve the glory and the praise and as we continue to come before our Father in adoration, the second piece of our purposeful prayer is to align our will, to align our heart with His. And that looks a lot like repentance for us. It looks a lot like coming before our Heavenly Father and saying, you Lord, I, sometimes I've gotten off. I've tried to do my own thing. I've tried to go my own way. But Lord, I know that you direct my steps, Lord, and I am purposefully and intentionally bringing my heart and my path and my spirit back into alignment with you. We read in Proverbs, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. As we go before our Lord, at this, in this piece of our prayer, we just silently, between ourselves and our Jesus, we just speak, we come before our Heavenly Father, and we say, Lord, I repent for the places that I've gotten ahead of you, out from you, Lord, where I've tried to take my own direction and my own steps, Lord. Lord, I ask your forgiveness, and I ask that my heart be brought back in alignment to yours, dear Lord. Lord, that I follow your path, that I follow your step, your leading, and your guiding for myself and my family for every one of my days. Let's just together as where you are, where you're standing, where you're sitting, as you're worshiping, just between you and your Jesus, just lift up your heart to your heavenly Father and br let's bring ourselves in alignment with him. Oh, Jesus. And as we pray, we begin to worship. We sing, O oh, come, O oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ.
As we continue in prayer, in a heart of worshipful prayer, we begin to applaud our Heavenly Father. This is when we just celebrate Him for all that He has done. For the prayer request that He answered, we call these kingdom wins. These are the ways that we have seen God's hand move in the miraculous. When we have seen prayers answered, when we have seen the storms calm, when we have seen God do the impossible. We speak out. We say, Lord, thank you for what you have done. We read it actually in Isaiah. And the Lord says, I will answer them before they even call to me. While they are still talking about their needs, I will go ahead and I will answer their prayers. That is a promise. Before we've even spoken them out loud, our Heavenly Father, He's like, you know what? I am making that way in the desert. I have made that solution for that. I have created that path in the wilderness, and I am speaking hope and promise and restitution and restoration over your life today. And we applaud our Heavenly Father. We celebrate Him for who He is and what He has done. 
together as a church body as we pray. Let's just raise our voices right now. We're just going to raise and just speak out those kingdom winds. Speak out into the atmosphere all that God has done. And as we speak out the winds, as we applaud our Heavenly Father, we say, Lord, all of our lives, you have been faithful. Lord, all of our lives, you have been good. And Lord, today, tomorrow, and forevermore, we as the sons and daughters of Jesus Christ, we will sing, we will shout of the goodness of God. I love you, Lord. And your mercy never fails me All my life I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up To when I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God All my life you have been faithful. Come on, church. All my life you have been so, so good. And every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire in darkest night. You are closer than no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. I have lived in the goodness of God. goodness is running after it's running after me your goodness is running after it's running after me with my life laid down I surrender now I give you everything your goodness is running after it's running after me come on your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running. 
God, I will sing of the goodness of God. I will sing, I will sing of the goodness of God. And the fourth and final piece as we lift our hearts in purposeful prayer to our Heavenly Father is to apply, to apply to Him for answers to our petitions. Because it's true that sometimes we're in the valley. It's true that sometimes we're in the wilderness and the trees are tall and it's dark and it's uncertain and we don't know what it's going to look like. We know that our Jesus is the answer. We know that he is our victory. But sometimes we just need to lay our hearts before our Father and say, Lord, I just, I need your support. I need your guidance. I need a little extra bit of you right now, Lord. And that's this petition that is applying to him for the answers. Coming before him and saying, Lord, I am just laying this situation at your feet. I don't really know what to do with it, but Lord, I am just giving it to you. And Lord, I am asking you to lead me, to guide me and direct me. Lord, just take my feet and step them in a path that leads directly to you. You know, in scripture, in Philippians, we read, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything, not just the big stuff, church, the little stuff, the big stuff, and everything in between. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. And church, here's a promise. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as we live in Christ Jesus. What a beautiful promise to rest in our Savior, to know that He is our peace. No matter what we're facing right now, no matter what the situation looks like in front of us, our Jesus, He has our answer, He has our promise, He has our peace, and yes, church, He has our victory. As let's just go before the Lord in prayer, and again, Church, this is just a time to just raise our voices, to just audibly speak out. Speak out, Lord, this is the mountain that's in front of me, right, Lord? And Lord, I am asking you to move this mountain today. Lord, tomorrow is great too, but I know that you're powerful and I know you can do it right now. Lord, I know you can move this mountain today, Lord. And I am speaking that into the atmosphere, Lord, in faith and in courage and in trust of who you are. I am speaking that this mountain before me, Lord, in who you are, this mountain will move. Let's lift our voices and just let's just be honest before our Father and just lift those mountains before him right now. As we lift our voices before the Lord, we pray, Lord, we pray that breakthrough happens today. Lord, we pray miracles over every single life, over every situation. Lord, we pray the movement of mountains. Lord, we pray the miraculous. Lord, we pay, pray the victory over each and every person, over each and every family, over each and every situation. How, Lord, in your name, in the name of Jesus, we 
pray victory, Lord, because you are mighty and you are beautiful and you are our victorious Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I speak the name of Jesus over you in your hurting in your sorrow I will ask my God to move I speak the name cause it's all that I can do in desperation I'll seek heaven and pray this for you I pray for your healing circumstances would change I pray that the fear inside would flee in Jesus name I pray that a breakthrough would happen today I pray miracles over your life in Jesus name in Jesus name Matthew 17, 20 through 21 says, Truly I tell you, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. And I think all of us, we've walked through situations that have strengthened our faith. And, and those aren't usually the fun situations to walk through. And and you're kind of kicking and screaming like, this is not the way I want to grow my faith. But this next song we're singing, it's called Believe For It. And my friend Hope here, she has a testimony to share of the time recently that her faith grew. Uh, six weeks ago, our family uh, grew just a little bit more. And we welcomed a beautiful, healthy baby, Naomi Joy. And two weeks after, or not, almost two weeks after having her, we ended up having to go back to the hospital because she got really sick. 
and couldn't breathe. And we found out that she ended up contracting the RSV and bronchiolitis. And in doing that, we went to the hospital and they said that she was struggling to breathe, but they felt confident in sending her home. So they sent us home. And the very next day, we went back. It had gotten so bad, she could barely breathe on her own. And we went in, and just on a checkup, they said, take her immediately over to the hospital. Do not go home. And we went there, and we stayed there. And she got put on oxygen. And every day, they tried to take her off of it. And when they took her off, she couldn't keep breathing. So they had to keep putting her back on it. And there was a moment when the doctor came in and said, you have to understand that there is a real possibility that she will not be going home. And all I could think is looking at that doctor and saying, you are dead wrong. There is no way that is going to be her story, and it will not be her story. And as soon as that doctor left, I called the prayer warriors that I could think of, I, or I texted, I texted Alana, and I texted Pastor Tiffany, and I texted Pastor Susan, and I said, I need my prayer warriors because this is not going to be Naomi Joy's story. This is not what God has intended for her. And we prayed, and we texted, and something that really stuck out with me that one of our dear pastors and a dear sister in Christ said while we were praying was, I pray that the nursing staff and the doctors that work on her have love of Christ in their lives and will continue to work on her with, with Christ and his healing hands. And that night, a young girl came in there, must have been fresh out of school. She, her name was um, Kelly. And as soon as she walked in, we were praising up a storm because we, we praise through the good times and the bad, and we were singing the song, Believe For It. She walked through that door, and she goes, oh, I love that song. And she started singing with us. And the whole time she was doing her checks on the baby, which was probably about 10 minutes, every song that came on, she knew it, and she just praised with us. And she sang with us as we did her checks, and that was absolute validation. God knew, God knew that we needed him, and he was there. And that was just a validation that we saw, and it wasn't but a week, week and a half later, we were able to bring her home off of oxygen, and she's continued to thrive and do well, and she's finally cleared from the doctors to be able to go out and about and be around. So it was awesome. They say this mountain can't be moved. They say these chains will never break. But they don't know you like we do. There is power in your name. We've heard that there is no way They haven't seen what you can do. There is power in your name. So much power in your name. Move the immovable. Break the unbreakable. God, we believe. God, we
I just want to take a few moments and uh, as you walked in this evening, we gave you a little um, communion uh, opportunity to join us. And, you know, as we kind of look through and look over our 2022 and we brought that to a close and now we're getting excited and looking ahead to 2023. There's so many things that God has taught us over this year. So many things that we still long for. So, many, so much vision that God has given us for our family, for our circumstance, and all the things in between. And getting our minds on those things is such a great way to remember what it is that God has taken us out of and what God has brought, how far he's brought us. Over Christmas, I often sit down with my brother, and we kind of go over and reminisce a little bit about life when we were kids, which wasn't really healthy and wasn't really awesome in a lot of ways. It was a lot of things, a lot of abuse, a lot of struggle that we faced uh, growing up, and sometimes we have a hard time remembering any of the good times. It's really easy to remember the hard times and really tough to remember any of the good times. But as we were talking, one of the things that God had revealed to me is that God put something in us. No matter what it is that we face, no matter what it, hardship that we walk through, God has given us a grace that goes beyond the physical. It goes beyond the things that we typically would walk through. And I believe that there was a grace that was given, even though we walk through stuff that I would never wish on my enemies. I know God gave us a grace for that and a strength to help carry us through it. Didn't mean we navigated through that season well. It doesn't mean that we did an awesome job and, you know, that, man, we walked through that season so easy and it was no problem. It was horrible and it just about ended us so many times. Both my brother, both myself went through a season of suicide where we were trying to you know, just life didn't make sense and we weren't interested in living anymore because of the hell that we'd walked through. And, I, and I'll preface that to say how important it is. That was our perception. A lot of the stuff that we walked through maybe wasn't as severe as we remember it. Maybe it was more severe than we remember it, you know, but it's about perception sometimes. But that's what I mean is that God gives us that grace that goes beyond. And so when I look back, and I remember what it is that God has done for my life. I look back to that beginnings, those humble beginnings when we were, you know, struggling through. We were using drugs, trying to focus on coping. We tried to use alcohol. We tried to use anything that we could get our hands on to try to come to a realization of a life worth living. And for both of us, when we found Jesus Christ... It changed everything for our life when God revealed himself because God's hand was always there in every hard situation. In fact, even today we can look back and ask God. We can say, God, where were you when these hard things were happening? Where were you when the most atrocious things were going on in our life? Where were you? And I've had God reveal to me exactly where he was at when certain abuses were happening. God revealed to me that he was standing right there and he was crying out for the abuse to stop. But we have free will. And people will shut off the voice of God. People will ignore or stop listening for the voice of God in their life because they think they have a better way. Because they think they can figure it out without God. And those are the worst times that I can imagine and that I can remember in my life. But in those times, God was right there trying to meet us right where we were at. He was crying out to protect us. He was giving us strength in a season where we could find no strength. And now we can look in hindsight because now God has led us in an unbelievable direction. We have five unbelievable kids. Even my brother, he has five uh, amazing kids. And just seeing what God has done over the last 25 years has been unbelievable. 
Didn't mean any season was great. It didn't mean every season was perfect. But that God was there all the way through it. And so that's, you know, as we go through our story, whatever your story it is, whatever the medical stuff that you deal with, whatever the, you know, family issues that you deal with, God has given you a strength. God was never one moment not in awareness of the circumstances and the things that you would face in your life. And none of them did he desire for you to walk through. He only knew that you would, so he put something in you that was greater than the things of this world. Because his word promises, he that is in us is greater than he who's in the world. And so God knows that when he's accessible to us, that no matter what difficulty and what hardship we have in our life, God is going to meet us right there. And he's going to walk us through that season for whatever his purpose is. And so today as we join in communion together and we remember the testimony that God has given us to this point, and maybe we're in the middle of a testimony where we're still in the middle of the fight, we're still in the middle of the struggle, and we don't know how God is going to answer. There's one thing that God has taught me this summer and through going on a sabbatical, going overseas. Actually, I circled the world twice over this last uh, number of months here, and there's something that God has given me over that because I had no idea what God was doing. But what he's given me is a realization that I don't have to know what it looks like on the other side because I trust him. Because of everything that he has done, I can walk through this season and this moment and these circumstances that we're facing now. I can walk through them with tremendous confidence, not because I know what's on the other side, but because I can look backwards and see what God has done, and he's never failed. I can see that God has been there every moment along the way. Through every difficult season, for every great season, God has been right there celebrating, encouraging and lifting up the whole time. And so I can face this new season, even unknown, with absolute confidence. 2023, we can face, even if we don't know what it has for us, even if we don't know what is next or what's coming, we can look backwards and see the hand of God all along, and we can enter forward with tremendous confidence in the hope that we have in Jesus. Because I can't emphasize this enough, Our life is not about the next hundred years. It's about the eternal picture that God has for us. His promise about where we are going and what we are going to do. It's not about the next few years until we take our last breath. This life is but a vapor in the wind. And when we get to the real picture, the real story of reality, beyond this story and get to the next place, That's where it begins. That's where what God built inside of us, that's where when he put every challenge in our life that he wants to take us to places unknown. Your current suffering is nothing in comparison to the glory that will be revealed in the time to come. What God has for us and what God will reveal to us is so significant that every struggle you've ever faced is nothing in comparison and I keep my mind and my eye on that when I remember what Jesus has done and what he will do let's remember Father we thank you for your flesh what you came to take so that we would have a doorway, an access to a new life, an access to a hope that goes beyond every circumstance that we would face here, a a, a confidence that we can know that you will do all things through Christ who strengthens us. So, Father, we remember everything you've done. We remember where we came from. And we realize how far we've come and also how far yet you have to take us. So we receive this and pray your blessing, Lord, on realizing that we could have hope in uncertainty, not looking ahead, but looking backwards and remembering what you did. Thank you, Jesus. Let's receive this together. 
And in the same way, he said, take this wine as a representation of my blood of a new covenant. It was a way God met us all the way up until the time of Christ. The law was in place to protect us until the time of Jesus comes. And under that first covenant, it was a protection type covenant. It was a covenant that was in place to try to help protect us until Jesus comes. And so in this season, as we receive the blood of Christ, and recognize that this blood represents a new covenant that no longer is about what we can do, but is completely and 100% determined based on what he has done for us. And in what he has done, it's a new type of covenant. And now we can run after him with great confidence, not based on how good or bad we've been, but on how good he has been. Because he took what we deserve to the cross so that he could hand us what he does. And so according to this new covenant, we can live with a great freedom, a tremendous excitement about what the future is. Because I'm not living based on what I deserve. I'm living based on what he deserves. And so this new covenant... As we pray over this new covenant, we just pray that God would meet you exactly where you are, that God would help you realize his love, the depth, the breadth, the width, and the depth of his love for you and what he's done for you so that you can live to the fullest of the potential that God has for you because we're not living based on what we have done or will do. We're living based on what he wants to do through us. So, Father, we just set our eyes on you. Set our eyes on the things of the kingdom of heaven so that you can carry us to what you desire to do. Because the moment that our eyes are fixed on you and we're running passionately after you, that's the moment where everything is happening in our life in a way that changes everything about how we get there. Father, we thank you for this new covenant that was signed by your blood. And we receive it unto ourself. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Well, we just want to thank you guys for coming out for such a special night where we could just bask in the worship with God and enter into his presence. And if you guys want to pray, we'll be available for prayer. But... We just want to enter into this new year, 2023, with a tremendous expectation that we don't have to know exactly what it looks like because we can look backwards and see what he's already done and trust that whatever he has in mind, we trust him. And we're going to see greater things than we've ever seen even of him. We will do even greater things than we saw him doing in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We love you guys. Thank you so much. And we look forward to what God is going to do this year in each one of your lives. We love you. Amen. What he's done All the glory and the honor to the Son. My sins are forgiven. My future is heaven. Now praise God for what he's done. See, on the hill of Calvary, my Savior bled for me. My Jesus set me free. Look at the wounds that give me life. Grace flowing from his side. 
no greater sacrifice what he's done what he's done all the glory and the honor to the son my sins are forgiven my future is Thank you guys for coming out, and we just want to um, just encourage a final blessing over your life as you go, and that God would meet you exactly where you're at, that every circumstance that you have, whether it's medical, whether it's uh, family issues, relational circumstances, Lord, that you would absolutely meet every person exactly where they're at, that you would move in their life, and that you would show yourself relevant, that you would prove that you want to fight for us in every situation that we have the courage to surrender and trust you for. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. We love you guys. Amen and amen.